Hello guys, this year marks the 10 year anniversary for Fish Wish. So um, from now on, I'm gonna start doing video blogging. I'm gonna bite the bullet. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Uh, to get the ball rolling, I'm gonna start off with a competition just to help spread the word. A three days guided fly fishing um, or uh, three days guided kayak fishing. All kit provided um, and that's on Fish Wish. So to enter, just share, subscribe and add a comment underneath and a winner will be picked at random at the end of June. So that's the plan. Um, right back to where we started 10 years ago, all about Fish Wish, rather than worrying about doing work for other organisations and having it rebranded. Uh, fishing for schools, um, I ought to start just by saying a huge thank you to them, because uh, how long ago was it, eight years ago or so, um, Charles Jardine and Fishing for Schools were just setting up themselves and, and they threw me a, um, a lifeline to help me with the school projects that I was working on through Fish Wish. But yeah, thank you to Fishing for Schools. Uh, the reason why I've hung up my hat, in case anyone's wondering, is just because I've worked myself out of a role. We well, have it, more video blogging. Um, I'm going to throw in some competitions. Hopefully you'll subscribe and um, watch this space. Right now, I'm my own boss again, so I'm going to go down to the river and see if I can catch myself a wild brown trout from uh, Cane Chimayo's River Chew. A bloody weeble. <laughs> um, I try not to carry a bag, it's just my mess thing to get snagged on stuff. That's why I look like a weeble. Um, the reel that I'm using is that little Max Catch reel. I don't know if you can see that too well in this light. But um, really good bit of kit. Um, 40 quid, I think it was eBay and uh, anodized aluminium, you can't really fault that. I'm just going to take it off my four way eight foot and put it on this um, Max Catch uh, rod. This is an ultralight two weight, but the thing is, I need the six foot because there's so much canopy. Um, I'm putting a four weight on it in the hope that it will be really, really overloaded and I'll just be able to do a tiny flick with hardly any line out and it'll, and it'll fly forwards. Hopefully you're not causing too much of a splash, but we'll see. That's the theory. Whether it actually provides any benefit or not is another question altogether. I got smashed up as well the other day on five pound tippet. Some of these bigger trout that come on the feed during mayfly season, um, they've got serious sets of gnashers, so don't go below five pounds, as tempting as it might be. Also, it reduces line twist when you're using a big fly like that. It's an interesting um, river, the River Chew. Most people have heard of Chew Valley Lake, the reservoir that feeds most of Bristol their water, but fewer people have heard of the river. Since that reservoir has been built, there's only about a third of the water in the channel than there should be. So they've got steep banks, and it's a bit of a misfit river at the bottom of a steep sided bank. And uh, there's currently a project just getting underway by Bristol Avon Rivers Trust to bring people together that have an interest in the river and see if we can make some improvements or certainly um, get a river fly project in place so that we can monitor um, the bug life on a regular basis and look out for any uh, early signs of pollution and make polluters pay. So that's happening on the 12th of June. If you're a local angler and you're interested then um, PM me or give me a shout and um, come down and do the training because it's free. You just need to pick a site once you have the training, you'll get given the kit that you need and uh, monitor the invertebrate life, which is surprisingly rich. It's a healthy river. It does get a lot of um, silt input though. And there's quite a lot of intensive farming and uh, that silt ends up in the river. And without much flow, it stays there. And the other big thing is, is barriers. So where there's barriers, uh, weirs, at one point I think there's 18 weirs. Jason Allen's the man to speak to about that. If you haven't seen it, have a look at his website on the River Chew. He's just done it off his own back and it's a really interesting read. So that's what Ian was catching his on the other night. And I'm gonna go for something less pretty, but more effective, which is that one. Just a CDC wing, brown hackle, grey dubbing body and pheasant tail at the back. So all of that will be in the water and just the wings will be sticking up. They can't resist it. They get lazy this time of year when there's so many mayfly around. Sometimes they can't really bother to break the surface. That's if they're rising. It's very bright. 
they might they might just be stuffed and hanging around at the bottom and not interested in feeding at all. Let's go and find out. The key to sneaking up on these fish is to make sure that you wade at a speed that's slower than the water. Um, if you look at that, it's hardly moving at all, so it will take me all day just to get up to there. But with this moving water, I can use this bank to buffer any bow waves that I make, and I can use that flow in that middle channel to um, absorb some of the bow waves that I make as I'm wading up. There you go, that fish topped again. Let's go and see if we can catch him. I just say we. God. Everyone was into this fee vlogging idea. But if you can't beat them, you have to join them. Glasses on. This is also a danger of spooking him by spooking any other fish that are in this channel. If they shoot upriver, they will never inevitably will spook him too. Simple as that this time of year. They're on it. Can't believe that. Just a wee one. We don't want the little ones, we want the big ones. Well, that first one, it's safe to say, is spooked. A real mayfly hatching off the water right next to my fly there. And there's the shuck. For me, it's always been as much about the sound and the smells as it has been about what you can see in front of you. Right, let's put this down. Somewhere, so we can find a stand. See if we can catch a fish. Ah, I just spooked one. Bollocks. You'll see what I mean about the natural deflectors. If you look at that log, the benefits that that's brought to the ecology. That fallen log has trapped all that silt. That's become established with some plant growth, and it's created this lovely. Well, you can just about see it. Some gravel showing through the sand there. Fly out my pocket. Ah, oh, see, you've moved up already. I'm chasing the trout. Let's see if I can get my line through this tree. <laughs> no. Cut. 50 years ago, there was a great flood in Canesham that killed, I think, about 12 people. They just put a stone up in the memorial park this year to commemorate those that suffered and those that, that um, died. And it was caused because as the flood came down the river, it smashed down a bridge and it was able to carry that load to then bombard the next bridge. You look at that and you've got to ask yourself, don't get me wrong, I think it's great that we've got so much wood in the river for habitat, but isn't that a flood risk? or risk of the beautiful bridge down at Daps Hill or the residents at Albert Mill getting battered. So we're just coming up to the site that I'm going to be doing my uh, fly monitoring, river fly monitoring on. So once a month taking some invertebrate samples uh, to monitor the pollution levels in the river. Gives you a really quick indication. And uh, yeah, there's a guest on my uh, waders there. Let's try here. Oh, look at that. Just need to catch a fish. Nothing topping. We 
would you believe it? It's an out of season chub. Oh no, it's an out of season chub. Hopefully it'll shake the hook off. Absolutely nailed that fly. So much for chub being shy. Come on, let's put you back. Look at that, beautiful demoiselle fly. That's what it's called, incidentally. Beautiful demoiselle. Demoiselle. Stunning. He'll catch some fish. You probably can't see the hatch here. You saw that fish top. Let's see if I can catch it. I'm trying to balance the foam somewhere. Rather than having to switch it on and off. Not much juice left though. But enjoy the peace and quiet. I'm just got to talk now. been before me don't you? That's an otter spring. Or is this the temptation of uh, picking it up and smelling it? What I thought was a trout is actually another chub, which is good. Unless it's the one I just caught. That looked like a nice fish. Let's see if I can catch that one. Well, there you go, safely in the net before I got the phone out. Just proof that I did manage to catch one. <laughs> and it is the same day, look, same clothes. <laughs> and I caught it just up there. Absolutely nailed it. And I never stop getting over how... No, I'll rephrase that. And I never get over just how pretty these fish are. Each one's got a unique adipose fin. I'm gonna have to have a look. I'm a bit funny about these, a bit obsessed. That was a bigger fish. Just topping up with her. Start there. Anyway, let's have a look at that adipose fin. I caught one once, but had a smiley face. This one hasn't got one. But it's that beautiful fish. Love them.